Hi, this is George Sandman. I'm the founder and CEO of Growth Drive. Growth Drive is the number one best-selling business advising platform, and this is our podcast, The Business Advisor Hot Seat. Now, in the hot seat, you're going to hear from industry leaders, thought leaders, your colleagues who are going to share tips, techniques, war stories about building a thriving advisory business based on delivering client wins. We're going to get into it. We'll get into it about the Growth Drive methodology, the Clarity software, what we see out in the world, so much more than uh, than just the system. And I'm also the author of The Growth Driving Advisor, which is based on over a decade of being an advisor to advisor, working with you and your colleagues, helping them build their practices, helping them through client engagements, and it, it's uh, really proven strategies for leading businesses from stuck to best in class. Check it out. So strap in. We're going to light this up. Here we go. This week's episode is brought to you by Growth Drive and the C3D certification. If you're looking to expand your reach and relevance with business owning clients, whether you're a business advisor or a wealth advisor, this is a certification for you. And after completing it, you will understand how to make profits and transferable value M&A price actionable, how to maximize results for your clients. So get the details at growthdrive.com forward slash C3D, scan the QR code, register. Listen, this is the path to building a thriving advisory business based on delivering client wins. Great leaders aren't born, they're built. That's where we come in. We're Advantage, the authority company. We transform experts into authorities with our best in business publishing and marketing solutions. We can help you explore the power of thought leadership, own your story, bridge your brand to your target audience, forge powerful connections, grow your influence, and unlock endless possibilities to elevate your success. Get started today at theauthoritycompany.com. In this week's podcast, uh, we're going to talk about uh, a couple of topics. So I've been having conversations with uh, Mike Garrison. Many of you will recognize the name. Mike is, is an absolute wizard. He is the thought leader when it comes to building a sales process driven by referrals, especially when we talk about wealth advisors and value advisors. So Mike and I were talking about exit planning and value this morning. And then I had a conversation later in the morning with Fletcher Brown, who's the CEO of the Business Enterprise Institute, home of the Certified Exit Planning Certification. And Fletch is super sharp. Not only has he been with BEI uh, since its earliest days, uh, but he also runs client cases. He's a great, great guy, good, fantastic leader for that organization. Okay. But not, we're not here for me to shine light on Mike and Fletch. We're here to talk about topics uh, that you're going to, uh, from which you'll get value. So put me in mind of talking about exit planning. And uh, those of you who can see this online know that that inside the C3D certification, certification in the three dimensions of business growth, there's a class on exit planning. And this is about connecting, the class focuses on connecting personal and professional intent. And I thought this was a good opportunity to chat for a few minutes about the relationship between the three dimensions of business growth and the various exit plans. So I, I'm not going to tease the uh, the entire exit planning class. That class, by the way, faculty uh, for that class with me are Fletcher Brown of BEI and Eric Owen of Oak Hill Advisors, who is a very experienced exit doer. He happens to be a SEPA, an exit doer who helps deliver client wins. Exit planning. Let's talk about connecting personal and professional intent. What is what is intent? Intent is uh, is a goal implicated. Intent is uh, is the difference between saying my goal is for this business to deliver twenty million dollars um, to my family five years from now, and I intend for this business to deliver twenty million dollars to my family five years from now. I intend to do it. Intentionality very powerful. So once we've uh, we've described our personal intent, 
then we have to turn to the business and say, okay, well, how can the business, what intent do we have for this business to support that personal intent? And, you know, oh, by the way, if you're keeping track inside 90.io, we have our strategy plan, which is the first document used in the first conversation with clients to help them guide them, to guide them in a conversation about personal intent and professional intent. Every good engagement starts with, with this conversation. It helps qualify clients. It helps get clients focused on what matters. It starts with the end in mind. So, you know, we have our first cohort, cohort one of the Growth Drive 90.io uh, embed. We need to think of a better word. Embed, the, the embed of the growth drive methodology and process, scorecards, business operating system, et cetera, inside 90. That's kicking off this week, uh, this week, and uh, it is the week of December 9th. So, uh, so a little later this week, you're going to have a couple of dozen of our community members going through this initial training. So, okay. Back on point, exit planning, connecting personal and professional intent. And what I wanted to talk about here, let's first, let's talk about the six exit options. And I really only care about four of them. So six exit options are sale to an insider, right? MBO or similar. Third party sale, M&A transaction. Three, an ESAW. Four, gift or bequest. And then there are the two others that we don't really, that aren't really that relevant. Sale to insiders, sale to a third party, sale to our own employees, and gift or bequest. Those are the four that we really care about that we see the most often in the market. The fifth is an IPO, hen's teeth, right? Those essentially never happen. Uh, and liquidation. Well, we that is not an exit we uh, we ever want to plan. So out of the three dimensions of business growth, now let's recap what they are. Apply. Why are they so relevant to these six exit options? And the three dimensions of business growth, you'll recall, are dimension one, predictable profits and cash flow. Dimension two is predictable, sustainable growth. And dimension three is predictable, transferable value. So what do we want to do? We want to create a launch pad for growth with, with predictable cash. We're going to invest that crash cash to create sustainable growth, to launch the rocket, right? Gentlemen, start your engines. And while we're working in those two dimensions, they're dimensions because imagine a business that has predictably and sustainably growing free cash flow. Is that business valuable? You better it is. Does the, where does the value come from? Well, it comes from being able to demonstrate, to prove, to create high confidence in a buyer that you have predictably and sustainably growing free cash flow above the rate of inflation. So very cool. Dimension one, two, and three. Why the, why the heck do we care about these and when we're talking about monetizing value? By the way, let's let's take another one of my bugways. And Mike and I were talking about this morning and Mike, uh, I hope I'm not telling a family secret here, but Mike and I both to agree that with the word exit planning is probably not the best term. Now, it's a term that John Brown coined in 1996, 28 years ago. 28 years ago, John Brown coined the term exit planning. Yes, John Brown uh, and Fletcher Brown are related. And I like to think of it in terms, and in fact, I've had some, uh, some robust exchange of views with leaders in the exit planning community on this point. You know, what we're, we're really not talking about planning an exit so much as we're talking about, we should be talking about planning the future equity value of a business and the, the future transferable equity value of a business. Because if it isn't transferable, it's malarkey. Thank you, President Biden. If it isn't transferable, what are we talking about here? So equity value planning. And put an even finer point on when you're talking to your client, you're typically sitting across the table from someone who has, um, you know, Jane Smith 
president and CEO, Acme Inc. President and CEO. Those are two different titles. What do those titles mean? Well, president, let's just make it easy. That is kind of the, the head of tactical execution, the operator of the business. Cool. Sweep that aside. CEO, that's what I want to talk about. What is the fundamental role of the CEO? The fundamental role of the CEO is to maximize shareholder value within the context of the business's vision and mission. The fundamental role of the CEO is to maximize shareholder value. Very cool. President and CEO. You need to operate this business and you need to be maximizing shareholder value. Great. Now, why do I bring that up? Well, and we start talking about transferable value, we are talking about the CEO role. And certainly the president contributes, but let's talk about transferable value, that third dimension of business growth. And let's bring it back around and talk about it within the context of these four top exit options. Our predictable profits and cash flow, predictable sustainable growth. If you're a, uh, you know, if you're looking to, most transfers are internal transfers. And internal transfers, the price of the business is dictated by cash flow. What do I mean by that? Well, often, more often than not, the seller, the current generation, founder, whoever that happens to be, becomes the bank. And I know that private equity is getting involved, uh, especially in the larger internal transfers. And, you know, and that's great. That's interesting. But let's look at your, your run-of-the-mill business with between 2 and $50 million of gross annual revenues that's going to do an internal transfer to, let's keep it simple, the management buyout. Now, we'll probably lump gifting uh, in here, but let's focus on the management buyout. Where the seller is going to be holding the note and the buyers are going to be paying down that note using organic cash, right? Cash from operations. Hmm, free cash flow. Well, do you think that now as the seller, you're sitting with your client, you're saying, okay, well, let's look at your rights, you know, let's look at your options to monetize value, to, to convert this asset, the, the value of your life's work into wealth for your family. Everything right with that. These people have worked very hard. That is their... Is their property and they can dispose of it as they see fit. You want to convert this into wealth? God bless. By the way, this democratizes wealth by creating additional shareholders down the road. But, but that's not the topic of this conversation. So, cool. We're going to do an internal transfer. Now, if you're sitting across the desk uh, from the, across the, uh, the restaurant table from your home and you're having a conversation and you're talking about, well, we could sell this, you know, we could monetize value, transfer value using a third-party sale. Here, here's the good, the bad, and the otherwise. We could also do it uh, by selling the business to your management team. We'll create a buyer. We'll, you, you know, we'll fund it out of cash flow. Um, ask a couple of questions. One, how are we going to figure out the value of this business? Does what the private capital markets would value this business, is that relevant to this conversation? It's probably going to cause more heartburn than anything else because the highest value that you can typically get for a business is selling it to a third party. Now, that may not be possible, appropriate, or uh, within the, the seller's plans uh, for the business. Cool. They want to sell it to the management team. Fantastic. Now, your seller is going to be holding the note. Cool. Does your seller, do you think how much on a scale of 1 to 10, do they care about predictable profits and cash flow? I'm going to go with 10 because we haven't offered 11 as a choice. How much are they going to care about predictable, sustainable growth? Dimension two, they're going to care that the business grows at least as fast as inflation, right? They're going to want to make sure they're not losing ground. And it may be that the business is growing at a, at a rate equal to the, the others in the industry so that we know we're not being left behind. We're creating additional value. And by the way, if you're the buyer, it sure feels great on the day you sign the paperwork to know that you're already increased the value of your investment. Maybe maybe the subsequent buyers, the managing team says, okay, well, we're going to run this puppy for, for five years, 10 years, and then we're going to sell it to a third party. Great. Terrific. Now, 
three dimensions of business growth, our internal transfer, management buy-in, our seller cares profoundly about predictable profits and cash flow. Let me ask you a follow-on question. Do you think the senior leadership team, the management team cares? I hate the term management team. Do you think the senior leadership team cares about having a business that has predictable profits and cash flow and predictable, sustainable growth? You bet they do. Are they giving personal guarantees? I don't know. They could be, but do they do they want to honor this? Do they do they want to make sure that they're they're that the sale is going to go through, that it's going to be completed, that they're going to get the value that they're working so hard for? You bet they do. So now we have a seller and buyers who are aligned around ensuring that the business can create predictably and sustainably growing free cash flow. Cool. Okay. But we'll get into the by the way in a sec. How about uh, if we look at the sale to a third party? Well, you have sale to a third party. The three dimensions of growth is, is the private capital market. It's the outside third party's perspective on a business, right? Strategic capacity is the way that the private capital markets measure a business. What they're really measuring is their risk. They are looking for high strategic capacity because high strategic capacity implies lower risk to future predictably and sustainably growing free cash flow. I know it's a mouthful, but if you say it enough times, you'll it'll really you'll understand how important it is predictably and sustainably growing free cash flow. Free cash flow is a term of art. Look it up. I'm being a wise Third party sale. Do they care about predictable profits and cash flow, predictable sustainable growth? And that third dimension, predictable transferable value, what do we mean when we get into that third dimension? What we mean is that you can demonstrate these things and that there aren't any, any icebergs lurking under the water. There aren't torpedoes ripping along under the waves. Negation, IP, governance, taxes, sales taxes, defensible market. There are a bunch of, there are eight growth driving objectives in that third dimension that your typical CEO has never had to confront as they've grown the business. One of them, which is a broad customer base, they, they've probably thought about. These are smart women and men, right? And then they, they know that if they have one customer, uh, they're going to sleep well at night. And if they have a thousand, that's brings its own uh, challenges, but is a, is a much better way to generate revenue. So third-party sale, we care deeply about all three dimensions of growth. How about our Nunisa? Do we care about predictable, sustainable, predictably and sustainably growing free cash flow? I can't even say it myself. You bet we do. And then ESOP is under all sorts of regulatory um, well, uh, uh, guidelines. There is a trustee and the, the ESOP, it has to be managed. Uh, you know, we have fiduciary responsibility, et cetera. Predict, you know, predictable problems of cash flow, predictable sustainable growth. We care about a lot. And when we're going to go and close the ESOP, we care about a lot of the things that are in that third dimension as well. How about gift bequest? Those are interesting, man. This is something I'd love to, to uh, maybe we should get Barry Goodman, our, our expert emeritus on family businesses to opine on this. Barry's a great guy. The gift, you're going to give the business to your daughter. Very cool. This is why I talked about it with the MDO. This week's episode is brought to you by Growth Drive and the C3D certification. If you're looking to expand your reach and relevance with business owning clients, whether you're a business advisor or a wealth advisor, this is a certification for you. And after completing it, you will understand how to make profits and transferable value m and price actionable, how to maximize results for your clients. So get the details at growthdrive.com forward slash C3D, scan the QR code, register. Listen, this is the path to building a thriving advisory business based on delivering client wins. Great leaders aren't born, they're built. That's where we come in. We're Advantage, the authority company. We transform experts into authorities with our best in business publishing and marketing solutions. We can help you explore the power of thought leadership, own your story, bridge your brand to your target audience, forge powerful connections, grow your influence, and unlock endless possibilities to elevate your success. 
Get started today at theauthoritycompany.com. You're going to give the business to your daughter. Now, your daughter is going to buy the business from you. And how is she going to pay for it? She is going to complete a note. It's, it's similar to the management buyout. Now, there are other ways to structure it, but let's keep it simple. You know, I'm the one telling the story here, so I get to pick the story a lot. But we're, give, we're going to gift the business to our daughter. And uh, there are, again, the tax code is out there. So we're going to we're going to make sure we don't run afoul of the tax code. But um, do you you want your do you want to set your kid up for success? You bet you do you want to hand them a business that currently generates predictable profits and cash flow? Yes. When you're preparing for the to gift this, to give this business to your daughter, do you care about predictable, sustainable growth? Yeah, you want to set her up for success. You want to set her up for success. And if you're going to be the, the seller holding the note, getting paid by your kid as they increase their equity share of the business, their equity ownership of the business to, to the point where you zero out. Yeah, you care about that a lot. So the three dimensions of growth, especially dimension one, predictable profits and cash flow, and dimension two, predictable, sustainable growth, matter a lot in a gift. You know, there's there's exit option that we're not talking about here. This is something that that actually will come back to Mike Garrison and his uh, and his partner, Micah Frame, they they talk about a business as an oil well. What if you never sold the business? What if what if what you do is you want to transfer the business? You want to exit the accountabilities chart. John Fulwater, I know you're out there listening. You want to exit the accountabilities chart because exiting your business does not need to mean leaving your business. What if you move from being the operator, you evolve into being strictly the CEO, so you're no longer president CEO, you're simply the CEO and someone else is running the day-to-day -day operations. How nice would that be? And then over time, you evolve from being the CEO to being the chairman. And you go from being involved in the business 80 hours a week to 60 hours a week to 40 hours a week, 40 hours a week in a different role, maybe 20 hours a week. You you, you might get to the point where you're coming in once a quarter to put your finger on the pulse and maintain strategic direction. You're still getting, you're still able to take money. You still own this business. You are still able to take, take cash out of the business. It is your asset. You have the right to do that. And you're plowing that, that cash into AUM. Well, that's, that's a fun way to create family wealth, right? And find a way to hang on to the business to maintain the jobs, et cetera, et cetera, to con you know continue your le contribute to your legacy. Now, if you're going to use this business as an oil well and you're trying to exit the daily accountabilities chart, do you care? You know what question I'm asking, right? Do you care about predictable profits and cash flow, predictable sustainable growth? Heck yes, you do. Heck yes, you do. And you probably care about several of the items, the growth driving objectives that are in that third third dimension, predictable transferable value as well. You're going to care about defensible market, right? This is this is defensible market, broad customer base, legal. Now, do you care about financial? Being able to survive a successfully complete a quality of earnings review? Maybe not. But you are going to care about you know a lot of these topics, and you're you're really sliding into a role where where the business can run itself. How wonderful would that be? You tell me that I'm going to work very little in the business, essentially, and we're all in the business. I'm going to work a little bit on the business, and I'm going to continue to be able to reap the benefits of my life's work. You know, who doesn't who doesn't think that that's an attractive exit option as well. So are the three dimensions of business growth relevant to uh, to these exit options? You bet they are. And now let's imagine, imagine for a moment, you're sitting with your client. You're a business advisor. A term I don't really like that much, but you're a value advisor. And you're sitting with your client. Maybe you're sitting with your client and you have their wealth advisor sitting with you. you you're out white linen steak lunch or having a you know an in-depth conversation. Imagine being able to say, okay, let's talk about three scenarios. 
those three scenarios are you going to sell this business. You're going to leave this business one day period. So let's plan for the value that the business will have at a date certain. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Okay. Imagine that you are going to sell this business to a third party. Is that attractive to you? What does that need to look like? Imagine you're going to sell this business to your leadership team. What does the business need to look like? What will it need to deliver? Imagine you're going to gift this to your to your daughter. What is it going to look like? Then well, again, color of MBO. Imagine that you stay on and that you that this business becomes an oil rig and you keep pumping oil out of the ground going into the future. That's that's another option. Now let's talk about what the business is going to need to do, how the business is going to need to behave. Have you ever heard of the three dimensions of business growth? No, I haven't. The three dimensions of business growth are fairly straightforward. And these tell me if these resonate. We could redesign this business so that it like best in class businesses delivers predictable profits and cash flow. Does that sound positive? Yeah, yes, it does. Who doesn't want that? Do you, that we could then leverage that strength to create predictable, sustainable growth. So you have an asset that is continuing to grow and continuing to generate to increase its free cash flow. Does that make, make sense? Is that attractive? Yes, it is. Can you see why a third party would want that to be true? Yes, I can. Can you see why your management team, why your daughter? So we can start telling the story and imagining a future and helping the client understand the, the reality that they can make this real with your help. Can you imagine being able to, to, to use this framework to illustrate the future? And if they say, well, how the heck do you create predictable profits and cash flow? Maybe you've received a little training from a your friendly growth drive a company. We have C, I'm, I'm talking to you looking at these, are, I'm looking at a slide here from the C3D certification program. You can get this training. Imagine saying, well, listen, here's a, here are a handful of things you'd want to focus on for predictable profits and cash flow. Even if you can't remember all eight, you're going to remember four, five, maybe six. Um, well, we're going to want to make sure you have an effective senior leadership team and that your people are efficient um, and, and that you have low turnover. You know, I, it, one of the things you're going to want to think about is how do you maximize recurring revenue? You know, one of the ways you can do that is to create customer satisfaction. Now, the, the two keystones for generating high customer satisfaction is Having a sales force that that it gives consistent makes consistent promises to the market, and an ops team that delivers on or ahead of schedule and to or above spec. So delivering on time and to spec does that does that resonate? Yeah, that, that resonates. Are you doing that today? Well, you know we struggle with stuff. Imagine this conversation. Imagine how how the client stop for a sec, go across the table, think about put on your client hat. And imagine learning this, hearing this, having this conversation. Now, is this conversation relevant to you as a business owner? You bet it is. Is this beat the pants off of sitting sitting there and looking at pages and pages and pages and numbers? Hey, we run a pro forma, and this is what happens if and they look our growth, and here are our assumptions. Yawn, yawn. Let's talk about the baby. Let's talk about how beautiful the baby is, where the baby needs to grow, build strength. Let's talk about this thing as an engine. This business is an engine. And if that engine is idling right now, let's figure out how to goose it, crank up the gas, and go screaming down the track. In control, right? But screaming down the track, running for the wind. Isn't that a much more fun conversation? And can you see, can you see why clients love this stuff? Clients love these conversations. You talk to anybody who's using uh, Growth Drive, using it, just grab a copy of my book. It's 30 bucks. It's a small enough investment. You know, I'm not going to get rich off of it, but you might learn something. And get people are loving the book. I, I'm frankly, no one's more surprised than I am. Grab a copy of the book and use those concepts to lead to client conversations. If you never do business with Growth Drive, I'm, I'm fine with that. Because what we're committed to is to help you Increase strategic capacity for your clients. How do we democratize wealth? How do we support our communities? I'm getting on my soapbox. I apologize. How do we deliver client wins? And even getting clients thinking 
is a great first step. So strategic intent, creating a valuable business, understanding that it may need to deliver value one day, whether that value is cash coming out of a pipe or a giant wire, understanding the many ways in which we can monetize value out of the business and the relevance of the three dimensions of business growth to whatever path we follow. By the way, clients will disappear. They're like shapeshifters, right? Clients will disappear. You'd be in one meeting, they're like, I'm going to sell this business to a third party and I want to do it tomorrow. And you can have a meeting with them a week later. They're like, you know what? I've changed my mind. I actually, this is, I want to, I, that oil well scenario, I like that. That's what I want to do. Oh. More often than not, have the flip side. I want to ride this thing forever. And the husband and wife will talk. And next thing you know, you're, you're, you're interviewing investment bankers. Anyway, listen, guys. These are the three dimensions of business growth. You can see them up on the screen here. Take a screenshot. Um, during the during C3D class, we are fortunate enough, um, I'm putting up here the discussion points that Fletcher Burton, Eric Owen, and I are going. And by the way, you know, so many people in the Growth Drive community who could be, could be joining this conversation. These are the two folks that I elected to bring in as faculty. These are the discussion points, right? Why is the exit plan the ultimate strategic plan? What are the six exit options? And we're going to talk about this, the three of us. We'll have a just sort of a panel discussion, an impromptu hot, hot seat podcast, if you will. And we're going to talk about discovering strategic intent. By the way, first thing we do inside 90, if you're a wealth advisor listening to this, you can use 90.io for free with clients and start them with the end in mind. When is a given exit path appropriate? Are growing, are growing profits and transferable value required? Yeah, almost always. How does the exit path impact transferable value? Now, remember I said, sell with third parties where you're going to maximize the cash that comes out of this. But that doesn't mean that that is what the owner wants to do or is able to do. You know, not everyone can sell their business to a third party. The value is typically a little lower in an internal transfer. That's cool, right? And beyond money, we're going to talk about beyond money. These two gentlemen between them have, you know, half a century, more than half a century of experience beyond money, family, legacy, and more. So as a teaser for C3. Guys, thank you. Thanks for humoring me. Thanks for listening in. Like, subscribe, share, and hit me up. If you have questions, suggestions, you want a topic you want to see covered, we are here. We are committed to your success. So thank you, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Hi, this is George. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, you can subscribe, like, and please take two secs to leave a review. It tells the world that you like what we're doing, and it helps us understand how we can improve the show. Thank you, and see you next time.